Here at Hawkins, we're fortunate to partner with a lot of different companies, which means we see a lot of different stocks, actions, optics, and other precision rifle components come through the shop. Because of this, we do get a lot of questions about full rifle builds. A good example of this was recently I was talking to a gentleman about a new rifle build on a Defiance action. He was looking to use our M5 Obendorf, and when I asked him if his action had Phillips in it, he wasn't sure what I was talking about. So I figured, why not cover the anatomy of a custom action, and then go over some of the terminology, specifications, and features that you might run into. And then we'll cover how you would pair them up with the best bottom metal for your application. For this video, we're gonna be talking about Remington 700 custom clone repeater actions. Some of the ones I have in front of me here today is a Lone Peak Arms Fusion Titanium. We have an American Rifle Company Coup de Gras, an Impact Precision NBK, and here in this full rifle build, I have a Zermatt Origin. Now, I'll be as thorough as possible, but if we miss one of your favorite actions or miss explaining a feature or specification, make sure to drop it down in the comments and we'll cover it in another video. But for now, we'll take a look at these actions going from the front or the recoil lug back. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the recoil lug. And this is what presses up against the recess of your stock and also what your barrel shoulders up to. Generally, there's two types of configurations that you can choose from. One is where the recoil lug is machined into the receiver body, or you can get it where the recoil lug is separate and ideally there you get one that could be pinned to the action. And generally as well, there's a cost difference between the two where if there's one that's been fully machined into it, the action's probably gonna be at a higher price point. Past the recoil lug, you're gonna see the tenon or the threads. And this is what allows you to screw the barrel onto the action. Most of these actions or most custom actions these days have standardized their tenons to where you can purchase shoulder prefit barrels that allow you to install barrels with just a few simple sets of tools. This also allows gunsmiths to offer high quality pre-fit barrels to their reamer specifications for any of these actions that have consistent tenon dimensions. I will say there's, besides the shoulder pre-fit, there is the barrel nut pre-fit option that, uh, for example, the Origin will take. And that's just where you would spin on the barrel, there's a extra threading on the front of it. You would put a barrel nut on there set your headspace with a headspace gauge and set it that way. Um, those are not shouldered prefits. I'd say in general, the shoulder prefit is kind of the preferred or more popular method now, but the barrel nut prefit is another very good option. For action bodies, they're generally made from three different types of materials. Stainless steel, titanium, and you'll find some in aluminum. The vast majority of actions are made from stainless steel. So you might look at an action manufacturer's website and they might have a fully machined one piece body stainless steel action and then they might have some lightweight versions in this stainless steel and then they might offer a titanium. Uh, Lone Peak Arms is a really good example of this. They have a stainless fusion and then they have a fusion in the alpine cut which is the same as this titanium action and then they have the alpine cut in the titanium to save even more weight. Other good examples of lightweight stainless steel actions would be like this Impact Precision MBK. You have the Defiance Anti, Kelbley Atlas Light and the Nook, and the Stiller Wombat, along with some other ones. The lightweight stainless steel action is a very popular option right now. Now we don't have any aluminum actions at the shop, but a good example of one would be say a Bat Bumblebee, which is made from 7075 T6 aluminum. Receiver bodies can come DLC coated or nitrided, or the full action can be a combination of the two when you include the bolt body, or you can get them all in raw stainless if you like that look. Now I'm not a materials or a coating expert, but coatings on actions do increase the hardness of the material that they're applied to and improve the corrosion or wear resistance of the part, and in general make them feel slicker and smoother while you're operating them. A really good example of this is this Lone Peak Fusion Titanium. This is a DLC coated receiver body with a nitrided bolt. Um, if you've ever used a titanium action that's uncoated, you know that it can kind of have that kind of grabby feeling when you're running the bolt, but with good coatings, these things run very smoothly. I've actually been running this action in NRL Hunter competitions for the last three years, and it runs great even in dirty conditions. 
Another example of some coding combinations would be our long action origin. Have it on our rifle right here. This is a nitrided action body with a nitrided bolt and a DLC coated bolt head. But as you can see, also a nice smooth running action. Now most actions either have a Picatinny rail machined completely into the receiver body or they have a way where you can screw and mount a Picatinny rail onto the top of the action or use direct mount rings like our long range hybrids or our featherweights. Obviously, if your Picatinny rail is machined directly into your action, you don't need to worry about that coming loose, but there is some weight savings and advantages to be able to put some direct mount rings onto the top of your receiver. On the bottom of the action, there's a few different ways that they can be cut, and this is what interfaces with your bottom metal and your magazines. So these are some things to keep in mind when you're specking out your action. I'm gonna talk about BDLs first, and then we'll talk about magazine-based systems. On BDLs, if you're gonna want a BDL, for the most part, you're gonna to wanna to have an action that has feed lips. This Lone Peak is another example, has feed lips inside of it that are designed to take a standard length Remington box or an extended Wyatt box, which just gives you a little bit cartridge overall length. If you're running a standard Remington 700, your action is probably gonna to need to be modified to take a wide extended box. There's two different versions of them. There's an MBE, which is a stagger feed box, and then there's also a CFE, which is a center feed box. You can actually get away with having an action set up without feed lips if you do wanna run a CFE box. For bottom metal, our M5 Obendorf is designed to take wide extended boxes. However, it will not take standard length Remington 700 internal boxes. So if you're looking to use a standard length box, you would pick our Hawkins Ovendorf bottom metal. But let's say you want a little bit more cartridge overall length so you can load your bullet out farther. You can have your action modified if it's not already set up to take wide extended boxes. Just give your gunsmith a call and then get you set up. If your action does not have feed lips, it's designed to take magazines. Generally, you're gonna see AICS magazines and AW magazines on the spec sheet. An AW magazine is a true double stack, 10 round, 308 base cased magazine. Uh, we see those in the PRS a fair bit, but if your action is cut to take both AI and AW magazines, it just gives you a little bit of more options. A good example of this is an Impact Precision 737R. Those are designed to take AI mags and AW mags and work really well with our Hunter flush magazine system. Also, if your action has feed lips, you can still run AICS magazines with it. The magazine and the cartridge is just gonna present between the feed lips, but it's not gonna interfere with any feeding or any function of the rifle. But if you have an action that has no feed lips, good options for bottom metal are our Hunter DVM and our M5 DVM. Generally, there are two different types of bolts that you can get. There's a two lug bolt, and there's three lug bolts. This Lone Peak and this Impact are 90 degree throw two lug bolts, and this Coup de Gras is a three lug bolt. Generally, a three lug gives you a shorter bolt throw, but needs a little bit more oomph for bolt lift. Now the Lone Peak and the Impact are push feed actions. They feature M16 style extractors and have spring loaded plunger ejectors. The Coup de Gras and the Zermatt Origin are controlled round feed actions and they have mechanical ejectors. The difference there is on a mechanical eject action, when you bring the bolt back, the brass is gonna hit a hard stop and fling out with however much inertia you give on your back bolt stroke. Where on a plunger ejector action, when you bring the bolt back, it's spring loaded. So whenever it frees from the action body, it's just gonna fling out. So I've pulled a couple of bolts here to kind of cover the differences between the two. First, we'll cover the impact and the lone peak. These have bolt heads that are fully machined into single piece bolt bodies. What that means is if you want to do a caliber switch or have a caliber switching rifle, you may need to switch the bolt and the barrel on your action, depending on what you're shooting. A good example of this is I shoot 6.5 Creedmoor on this action, but I also shoot 223. When I want to go to 223, I grab my 223 bolt, I grab my 223 barrel, spin it on the action, and I'm all set. But when I want to switch back, I grab my 308 bolt face bolt, my 6.5 Creedmoor barrel, and I'm off and running. Now for the Zermatt, as well as the Coup de Gras, they have swappable bolt head bolts. So this Zermatt is currently chambered in 280 Ackley Improve. Let's say I want to go to 7PRC. 
What I need to do then is get a magnum bolt face bolt from Zermatt, grab a 7 PRC barrel, and I'm off and running with 7 PRC. If I wanted to go back to my 280 Ackley, just grab my 280 Ackley barrel, grab my standard bolt face bolt, and I'm good to go. I'd say both options have their place in the market. It's super easy to change a bolt head. It's really easy to just grab a new bolt and throw it into an action. With modern pre-fit barrels, really it just gives us a lot of options for swapping calibers or having one action that might uh, serve double duty, like an NRL hunter rifle and a 223 trainer. The last thing I'm gonna talk about real quickly here is bolt knobs. It might seem like a little thing, but the nice part about specking out a custom action is you generally get to pick what kind of bolt knob comes with it, or you can purchase one as an accessory. Good example here is Zermatt. I have their spiral bolt knob here, but they have all sorts of options. They have tacticals, they have extended bolt knobs. And like I said, it's just really nice to be able to purchase a bolt knob that fits the look of the rifle you're looking for or fits the rifle's application. And that's the anatomy of a rifle action on a high level. I would say right now, this is a great time to be into precision rifle because there's just so many high quality components available to us and everything's just getting better year after year. I hope that the information here in this video helps you with your rifle action purchase. Thanks for watching.